Hey guys, this is the AC Surface Tech, and today what we're looking at is how to check the refrigerant charge level on an R22 outdoor condensing unit with a fixed orifice as the metering device right in front of the evaporator coil. So this is an example of capillary tubing, and this is an example of a piston chamber with a piston inside of it. Whenever you find those, you need to check the refrigerant charge in superheat. If you have a thermostatic expansion valve, something that looks like this, then you can actually check the refrigerant charge in subcooling right here. But since we have a fixed orifice on this one, we're going to be looking at our superheat right here. So if you take a look right here, we have our suction line temperature. It's reading roughly 51 degrees and 51 degrees minus 37 degrees. And we have a superheat of 14 degrees. So that's our actual superheat. Now what we need to do is we need to find our target superheat. So it's not as simple as checking the refrigerant charge uh, with subcooling because the subcooling rating is typically uh, found on the rating plate right up top on the uh, outdoor unit. So we actually have to find the target superheat which changes while the system is running. So we need an indoor wet bulb temperature and we need an outdoor dry bulb temperature in order to do that. So we come right over here to our target superheat and you see that we have our indoor wet bulb is flashing right now. So if we have a wireless sensor for the indoor wet bulb temperature then we can go ahead and make sure we sync it and then we'd be automatically reading our readings here and we could also either manually or uh, automatically have our readings over here for the outdoor temperature. Now the outdoor temperature is not going to move that much so a lot of people just uh, enter the outdoor dry bulb temperature themselves. If you're going to check it wirelessly you could use something like this tool right here. This is the SDB2 and we have you can actually check your delta T with this. So you can actually check several readings with this. Uh, but if you're just looking to do your uh, wet bulb temperature, you can actually take that right with your, right with your, say your first sensor right here, your, your return sensor. So inside the building right now, we're reading 65 degrees wet bulb temperature, and that's several feet right before the furnace. So this one is a furnace and evaporator coil, and so basically you just want to take your reading within a few feet uh, from the indoor air handler or the furnace. So we're reading roughly 65 degrees as an indoor wet bulb temperature. Right now I actually have the caps on here because I don't want to let too much humidity on these because it's really humid outside right now. Uh, and what I do is I just take these caps off and you can actually drill a 3 8 hole into the return duct and then you can uh, put a duct plug in that afterwards. Or if your return, if, if you have say a, a single return air grill, uh, you can actually take this reading right there if it's close to the unit. Otherwise, if you don't want to sync it, you can actually enter it manually. Uh, here's another wet bulb psychrometer, and this one happens to be by Amp Probe. And once again, inside our reading was 68 degrees indoor wet bulb temperature. If you wanted to change this indoor wet bulb temperature, what you'd end up doing is you'd end up hitting this and holding it and you press it again, you can press it again, and then you can adjust whatever the wet bulb temperature is inside the building. So I just hit this again. Once I'm done, it's going to calculate the target superheat. Our out, outdoor dry bulb temperature right here, if you see this, we're reading 82.4 degrees, and we have our uh, clamp temp sensor hooked up to this. Once again, you can do this wirelessly as well. So if you've seen some of the other videos, I really like this ST4 by Fieldpiece. Uh, this is, uh, you have two temp sensors on the top right here, and these are bead type uh, temp sensors. And we're reading 82.3 degrees. So you see that we're gonna have to change this right here. So we just press this, and you see that this is flashing. We're going to go over to our outdoor dry bulb temperature, and we're gonna change that. So now we hold the enter button, and now we're going to press that again, press it again, and we're going to go down roughly 83. Actually, we're going to change that. I, want the, I wanted to get down to about 82 right there. Right when you press these arrows right here, that indoor wet bulb flashes first, then it's the outdoor uh, dry bulb temperature. And you have to hold in the enter, hold it, press it again, 
press it again, go down, and we're going to leave it about 82. So you see our target superheat should be 15.4 degrees. Now let's go ahead and see what we actually have on the system here. So you see we have a vapor pressure of roughly 67 PSIG and the digital manifold gauge that converts that to a saturated temperature of 39.2 degrees. Our suction line temperature right here is reading 50.7 degrees, so we got 50.7 minus 37, and we actually have a superheat of 14 degrees. Our target is 15.4, and we have 14, so we have slightly a little bit more refrigerant in the system than we need. Now, uh, as long as it's within, say, 2 degrees, 3 degrees of that target superheat, I'd like to be as close as possible to the uh, superheat, the actual target superheat, and this one we have a little bit uh, more refrigerant in there. If we had a actual superheat that read roughly 20 degrees of superheat and our target was 15, then we would want to add refrigerant in order for the superheat to lower. If our superheat reading right here was say four or six, then we would want to recover refrigerant out of the system until our actual superheat matched our target superheat. So that's how you do that. So our refrigerant level is good on this. Now in reference to syncing up your indoor wet bulb psychrometer, let's just go back right here and we're going to go ahead and hit the sync. I'm going to hold that and it's going to try to find the instrument. You want to be within 1 to 10 feet of the instrument while you're syncing. So now we're going to go ahead and press this one. So you see that this is now matched, 75.3, and that's 75.3. I can now take this into the house, you know, maybe 75 feet away or, or 30 feet away or 50 feet, you know, and it's going to read the indoor wet bulb temperature. So really, the outdoor dry bulb doesn't move too, too much, but the indoor uh, wet bulb does. As the system runs, the wet bulb lowers, and uh, so that's going to end up changing your target superheat while the system is running. Obviously, right now, I have this SDP2 outside, so I'm reading a very high uh, wet bulb temperature. Now, say I shut this off right here. What's going to happen is, you see, we're getting a, a no reading right here. So we can turn this back on, and this was the last tool that it was synced to, so it, it should automatically go ahead and display the indoor wet bulb right there. So you see how that works? If we wanted to sync for our outdoor dry bulb temperature, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and press up, and we're going to come over to our outdoor dry bulb, and now we're going to go ahead and hit the sync. And now that's looking for our outdoor temperature. So now we're trying to link up our uh, multimeter with our temp sensor, and you see that we're holding our sync button in, and then it was able to read the same temperature as we have right here. So now this will automatically calculate our target superheat the entire time while the system's running because this is outside and this will be inside. And we only need one of these probes and it'll be the one right here that's in the return. If you do end up having to set this in manually, you constantly need to go and recheck what the indoor wet bulb temperature is because you're going to have to lower this as the system's running because your wet bulb in this, inside the house is going to continue to fall. That's what's so nice about the uh, induct uh, dual psychrometer here, the SDP2. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take in uh, my digital psychrometer and let's go ahead and see what the indoor wet bulb temperature is now. So you see we have our induct dual psychrometer inside the house. It's wirelessly giving us a wet bulb temperature of 63.4 degrees. We have an outdoor dry bulb temperature of 84.3 degrees. That's taken with this instrument right here, uh, and we have this clamp sensor right here. We're just reading the temperature within about a foot away from the outdoor condenser coil. So this is completely wirelessly telling us what the target superheat should be uh, presently, and what we'll do is we'll go back, and you see that we have 12.2 degrees of superheat, and we're reading 11.2 six as our target superheat so that system refrigerant charge is good you want to get as close to that target superheat as possible now if you want to 
uh, basically change this back to manual again, all you need to do is hit the enter button. And now you can go ahead and do it manually. So you can just press this again. If you want to change this down so you didn't have your, your wireless micrometer, and what you can do is you can just enter this in manually. Same thing with over here. You, if you uh, don't have the wireless instrument, you can just bring this back right back to manual again, and then you'll be good to go. The way to do that, you just press this, the up button, then it's going to come over here, hold the enter button in again, and now you're out of the wireless, and then you're back into the manual temperature reading again. And it will tell you what your target superheat is. If you're looking for any of the tools used in this video, I have them all linked down in the comment and description sections below. If you want to support this HVACR training channel, click right here. If you want to subscribe, click right here. And if you're looking for another training video, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.